Hey everyone, Greg here. Today I'm just going to show you a tutorial on the Puppet Warp tool and a way I'm using it that I haven't really seen other people use it. And I think this technique could really save you a lot of time, especially if you're using it on something like fantasy map making, which is what I'm going to show today during this tutorial. But you can feel free to find other ways to use this as well. So I've gotten into fantasy map making a fair amount lately. My son is really into D&D &D, and so he's gotten into it a little bit. And so I really find that it's a fun art form sort of combining, you know, cartography with drawing. Uh, and I really find it fun. And so I grew up reading those Tolkien books like so many, I'm sure. So The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, also the Shannara books, uh, Terry Brooks. And so those books all have these really cool maps inside them. And so I've experimented with that and I've followed, you know, found lots of tutorials to, to learn more and more about this. And so I'll point out a couple of resources that I found helpful really quickly. And so just two sites, uh, this, this mapeffects.co. So this is Josh Stolar's uh, so there really are a lot of great tutorials and cool t tutorials on here. So I've been practicing some of the techniques he teaches. The other site I'll mention is this YouTube channel, WASD20. Uh, Nate, uh, I'm forgetting Nate's last name, but Nate, the guy that runs this, really has a lot of great resources here on not just fantasy map making, but if you're into tabletop games or D&D &D or things like that, like my son certainly is. Um, there's some great stuff on his channel. So check out those if you want, but I'm gonna show you a technique which I came up with here in Photoshop for using the Puppet Warp tool. So open on screen here, I just have a sort of map I'm working on, and so I really haven't tried to take this to a finished map yet. This is more at the moment uh, sort of just my play area for working on techniques, working on texturing, working on drawing different things. Um, so I'll just zoom out to full screen for a second here. So let me just zoom out so we can see the whole map. So I tend to usually work at a really high resolution if I can. That way, uh, even if my finished product is going to be something where I don't need to be that zoomed in at that scale, uh, it just means that the detail work is going to be a little sharper and a little crisper in my final uh, file and my final project. So sometimes I need to, I like to work at a higher resolution because of that. Uh, but you can uh, start to run into really big file sizes. I have a lot of layers here. And so my file size is currently over two gigabytes. So you do have to sort of pay attention to that. Uh, but this is just a play area. So I'll be able to rein that in a fair amount. But again, I like to do that. Uh, so let's just move on so I can show you actually this specific technique. Uh, so let me just zoom in here at this forest at the bottom of the screen. And so I try to organize things into layers. So if I just right click over this, I can see that I have this as forest here. So I've organized my forest into a folder here. And so I do tend to try to group layers and stay as organized as possible, just because I know with my Photoshop workflow, I tend to do things like line detail and then on separate layers underneath that I'll have some base color and then I'll have layers with things like shadows and highlights. And so it really can become a lot if you don't stay organized. So I try to organize as I go. I've sort of learned that over the years. Uh, it just saves me a lot of headaches. Um, so that's a small tip for you, but let's get into this technique here. So let me come above this here, just where I have a little open ground here. And I'm just gonna take a new layer, a basic brush tool, and I'm just gonna draw sort of, this could be a path, this could be whatever, this could be a road. Uh, so this is, I'm just gonna show you basic, uh, sort of the basic um, things you need to know about the Puppet Warp tool. Now traditionally, a Puppet Warp, warp tool, you can use it to push pixels around. Uh, I'm sure that it gets used a lot in things like fashion uh, editing, where they're trying to push in articles of clothing and things like that. So it's sort of like the Liquify tool, but a little different. So let me just come in here. You'll find it under the Edit Puppet Warp tool, and it's gonna work on whatever your active layer is, which is important. Uh, so right now I'm working on this layer 25, and the only pixels that are on this are this road, not the grass behind it. And that's gonna become important when you're manipulating pixels. Uh, what is on that layer? What are you actually manipulating? And so what's important now also is that this road here that I put down is one con continuous uh, line of pixels that are connected. And that's gonna become really important as I show you the different ways this Puppet Warp tool uh, can work. So when you're using a puppet warp, the puppet warp tool like this, you basically see this pin icon and what you can do uh, is you can come in here. I'm just going to drag this up here. We won't worry about that too much right now, but I'm going to put down a pin. So you can put down sort of these anchor points. And then once you have multiple anchor points down, you can pull any one of these anchor points. And what's going to happen is the other anchor points are going to stay fixed. So if I grab this one here, 
suddenly I can make this shorter, I can make it longer, and you notice how the other anchor point stays fixed on screen. Uh, so it really lets you come in here and start to manipulate this into whatever shape you want. So you could easily erase this and redraw this, but imagine if you have a map and then you had something that was much more detailed th than this road, and you sort of wanted to manipulate the shape of it without redoing all that work, you could come in here and start to use the Puppet Warp tool. So maybe I'll put down a pin in the middle, and then maybe one here and one here. So let's just say I wanted to start to turn this into more of an S-curve. I would do something like this, and then if you pull something far enough, you'll notice that it'll start to get uh, more of this uh, zigzag shape here, uh, which is maybe what you wanted. Maybe you want this to be a zigzag path, but if I did want to smooth this out to keep it sort of rounded, I would just add in a few more anchor points and use this to sort of keep this more of that uh, smooth curve rather than having it change totally. And then of course, once you have it the way you want, you just hit enter and then it's gonna lock in all those changes. And suddenly now I've changed my road from the straight road into more of this S curve. So that's sort of how you would use the puppet warp tool to anchor certain areas and push around other areas uh, when you have this continuous shape. But when you have something like a forest here, you have the potential for it to work completely differently and in a really cool way. So on this forest layer, I'm going to come down here. So this is this is my forest layer. So let me expand that out. And within here, I have the shadows on a different layer. So I'm not worried so much about the shadows right now because I'm actually going to redraw shadows if I do a new forest. But here is my forest layer here. This forest A is all the trees. So here's how I think you might find this really useful uh, in fantasy map, map making. So there are all different kinds of uh, style trees you can do and some styles of drawing save you time by not drawing all the trees. This style here, which I did, I'm actually drawing out and shading in individual trees. And this is a style that uh, sort of Nate goes over on his WASD20 uh, channel. So you can check that out and he talks about a lot of different styles. So this is one I was playing with on this map. Now. There's nothing wrong with this style, and I really like the look of it, but it does take a lot of time to shade in and draw all these individual trees. So let's say I wanted a new forest over here or completely in a different corner of my map. The problem is, let me just grab this whole forest layer here. Uh, so I'll just grab the, I'm not worried about the shadows right now. So I'm just going to grab this forest A, and then with my alt, so with my select tool, so I can hit V on the keyboard, or grab my move tool there, and then alter option. Alt if you're on a PC, Option on a Mac. I'm just going to drag out a new forest layer to over here. So I have this new forest layer here. Uh, the problem is, if I just left it like that, because these are the exact same shapes now, this forest is the exact same shape of that, there's a good chance the eye is going to pick up on that repetitive pattern, and it's just not going to look like these are natural, a natural forest where the trees grew in the exact same pattern, that's just not going to be realistic. Uh, however, if we were just to move around the position of some of these trees, I don't think the eye on a, a quick pass, or even if you study the map a little bit, is going to notice that some of these tree shapes are the same here as they are over there. It's just not a detail you're going to notice. So if there were a way to sort of quickly reorder these trees into a different shape, uh, or have multiple trees, uh, a forest, where we just manipulated the shapes, we could save a lot of time versus redrawing all these trees. So let me show you how you can do that. So I'm just going to come in here, same thing, edit, and I'm going to go under Puppet Warp. Now, the reason why this technique is going to work is because these trees, in terms of the pixels on screen on this layer, they are not on the forest layer below they are separated and so this tree which I'm about to put a pin on here so if I were to put a pin into this tree here I can now move this tree completely separate of moving any of the other trees and the reason why I can do that is because I'm putting a pin in something where the pixels if you put a pin in something where those pixels are not connected to anything else on that layer that you're working on you can move it completely separately so now I can come in here I can put in pins on individual trees. It doesn't matter where I'm putting the pin on that tree because I can move it completely separately. Now here's one where two trees are connected. So if I put a pin on each tree 
it's going to do weird things, right? Because they're connected, right? So let me just delete this pin up here. But if I have a pin anywhere now, I can just move those together. So if you do have things that are connected, they will move together. But otherwise, you're just putting pins on individual trees. And now I can come in here and I can completely take these and turn this into whatever shape forest I want to without having to draw, redraw all these trees. And you're not going to notice on glancing at this map that some of these trees are the exact same shape of these trees. Now, if you were just using one tree shape and repeating it over and over again, sure, sure, you would notice. But when you have a number of trees like this, you're just not going to notice that shapes are repeated because your eye is picking up this overall shape. It's not really going in to the individual shapes of the different trees. So one thing you could do is you could create a brush or a screen, uh, a sheet, uh, anything. It could be a brush. It could be sort of a different document. I think a brush would be the maybe the basic uh, best way to do it. To find a bunch of trees as a brush, you can stamp them on screen and then you can move them around within that layer any way you want to and suddenly you're giving yourself a whole new forest shape and a whole new look. Uh, and the more you practice this, uh, sort of the quicker and quicker you can do it. So again, I'll just hit enter to lock that in once I've done it. And then I'll just zoom out a little bit. And so if you're viewing this now, suddenly here, this has this more organic forest shape than if I had just taken this shape here and repeated it. And I've saved a lot of time by not actually coming in here and drawing all of the trees. Now, if I were doing this, I would come below here and I would put my shadow layer and I actually would come in here and probably redraw the shadows really quickly because if I move these individual shadows, I could use the same technique, but I'd have to grab each shadow line. And by the time I did that, I could just come in here and really quickly, boom, 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 right? So you can really quickly come in here and draw something like shadows, but the trees are going to take a little bit more time. So as with any technique, it's figuring out what is the best workflow, what is going to be the most effective and give you the result you want. So I could come in here and really quickly do the shadows. I'm not going to do them all, but you get the idea. So again, this is the Puppet Warp tool, and using the Puppet Warp tool on layers where you have discrete individual pixels that aren't connected to other pixels on that layer, then you could come in and move things around separately. So you could use this on a mountain layer if the mountains aren't touching. You could use this on a village layer if the villages aren't touching. So it really does give you sort of another fun way to take things on your map, especially when you have a lot of something like these trees uh, and sort of move it around to give it sort of this individual look without having to redraw all the trees. Now I suppose you could do something like selecting individual trees, then copying and pasting them to a new layer, but then your layers get out of control. It's going to be hard to figure out which tree is where, and it's just not going to be as effective. So I really do feel like this puppet warp trick can be very helpful and can really save you a lot of time when you're working on layers that do have these separated shapes. So that is the Puppet Warp tool inside of Photoshop and how you can use it while working on your fantasy maps and how you can use it to not just manipulate different parts of one shape, but how you can use it to move around individual shapes when they're separated within your layer. I hope you find this helpful. If you do, go ahead and subscribe below because I will be doing more fantasy map making tutorials and just Photoshop tutorials in general. I really love Photoshop, so subscribe if you want to get more tutorials and go ahead in the comments below if you like this or if you have Photoshop techniques that you like to use on your fantasy maps, I'd love to hear about them. This has been Greg. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon.